What's your worst personal trait and how did you adjust it in the area of business? Because there's so many people who are watching this, who admire you, who know your story, mm -hmm. but we're not perfect. You know, what would you say is your worst personal trait and how have you adjusted it in the world of business? Addictive personality. When you talk about putting your head down and working hard, you know, you're addicted to your job. You're addicted to, your, to, to, to performing your service. You're addicted to being successful. You're addicted to looking good. You're addicted to all these things. And then there's other addictions that happen. And those addictions are the ones, those demons that you have to fight because you're covering up a lot of different things. And I've been blessed to be given the opportunity. I've been given more chances than, they say, a cat has nine lives. Well, Cruz has got 29 lives. And I have to be thankful for that. But that only happens when the universe is giving you back for being a good soul, for being sincere. So how, did, how, how have you adjusted it? Or did you need to adjust it? I needed it to, to go away. I needed, I needed to go away. I needed to go do 30 days. I needed to go sit down for a second. Sometimes, you know, I look at it, if you look at that height, I say, wow, you did it so fast. You did it all so much. That light switch was on for those 25 years. That light switch did not come off. There was no rest, there was no relaxation, there was no spiritual grounding. That light was just on, you just going, 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 going. Eventually you're gonna hit a brick wall. Eventually you're gonna wake up one day and be like, what the fuck is going on? And I hit that brick wall. And that brick wall came at what I would like to say probably one of the greatest achievements of my career in putting together the Bad Boy and Family Tour, the anniversary, you know, it was, there were very few individuals who believed that would ever happen. And Puff has it, and I have the video, and Puff says it, he said the one person that he could not have done it without was me. That could go both ways. That could go as a vote of courage and start celebrating, or that could go as, God damn, but I'm not being compensated for what I feel I deserve in that. And I don't mean financially, I mean in credit. Ego again, controlling that ego, controlling that demon. And because of that, I had to go take a break and sit down and really reevaluate Am I a good man? I'm going against these core values. Am I a good husband? Am I a good father? Am I a good son? Am I a good child of God? And that has, you have to reevaluate things and come, come to Jesus in a mirror and say, hey, made some mistakes, you did some great things too, but where do you go from here? And that's learning and, re and managing yourself because when you're constantly giving and pouring, pouring and pouring, you can't pour from an empty cup no more. You got nothing left for you. And that took a moment to take a step back and say, hey, it's okay. And in going away and working with kids that have childhood turmoils that they don't have the skills to deal with that grow into negativity in their future lives, to find individuals who lost parents, lost loved ones, lost certain things in their life that they thought they couldn't live without and masking that pain. And, uh, excuse me, I get emotional about it because I understand I'm not the only one. You know, mental illness is a big deal in the music business. A lot of people don't address it. Talk about Lighty killing himself, up for public opinion. Talk about President Def Jam killing himself. Talk about a lot of individuals who are masking who they truly are because they don't have the tools. Sometimes you need to get coached. Michael Jordan's great, but he need a feel to become the best Jordan he could. Mike Tyson, I love Mike, say from Brooklyn, just like me, he said Brownsville, Brooklyn, but he needed cuss. Sometimes you need somebody to coach you, but you gotta be willing to be mentored. You gotta be willing to listen. You gotta be willing to change your ways for the benefit of yourself. And that's not being selfish, because once you're good, the people around you start to get better. The people around you start to feel that positive energy and say, whoa, wait a, wait a minute, he's different. He's special, something different about him. Hope he stays that way because with that, there also is relapse. That's a part of recovery. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. But when individuals push you towards that relapse, when people know you're not using, you're not drinking and offer you something, do you consider them friends? I consider them angels because they're testing you. Because if you don't know how far you can, you can't, you can't know where you're going unless you push yourself to that edge. You can't know where you're going unless you push yourself so hard that you got no more left. I listen to these inspirational messages every time I go to the gym or when I have a chance at home or when I'm driving. And you've got to be a stakeholder in your life. You've got to know who you are. Are you a starter? Are you a finisher? 
You know, do you start and don't finish? You have to take ownership of who you are. So as you're judging everybody else and he's this and you're that, well, look at yourself. Because as you judge other individuals, you're just pr pr projecting who you truly are onto them so that you don't have to deal with your inner work. I've dealt with my inner work. My wife, God bless her soul, she's an angel, she's a saint. She's dealt with my inner work. My kids have dealt with my inner work. But everybody here, as if you could take one thing away, deal with your inner work. Because that's going to be the most important part of your growth. Because you're not going to achieve your blessings until you're ready. I complain all the time to my wife. I'm blocked, I'm blocked. This is not happening, that's not happening. Well, because I wasn't right. I'll tell you one thing. The breakup with me and Lighty was over uh, vitamin water. I didn't get what I deserved out of the deal. At least I thought that. But then after 2020 hindsight, if I'd have got what I thought I got out the deal, I might be in the grave, in jail. It wasn't time. I was protected from that. Thank God. And I held a lot of animosity towards him for a long time. And at my 40th birthday, when he came and he says, it's time to put Batman and Robin together. I said, yeah, but this time I'm Batman and you're Robin. <laughs> and he laughed. And there's a beautiful photo of us. And we were getting back together. And we lost him about a month and a half later. Rest in peace. And my mom said the best thing in the world she could ever say to me, because I was heartbroken about it. She said, that was his soul making amends to you. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.